What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Before we get started, it's important that I let you guys know whether you're a professional, a business owner, or you're a content creator. Anywhere where you have to show up as the best version of yourself is so important, so important for you to be extra, extra careful. And it's not the clothes that you wear. It's not whether or not you're brushing your teeth first. I mean, all of that is important. But the most important thing for you to do is make sure you get that teach pack because it's it's a phenomenal product. You got the AM moisturizer, you got the SPF 20, you got everything to make sure that your skin is exfoliated. I make sure I do it every single day. And you know, the interesting thing about Teach Hanley is that a lot of people think that it's the other things. It's the stuff that everybody else does, but it's the things that set you apart that really make you a phenomenal person in the visibility and in the eyes of the people that you meet because First impressions, you only get the one time to make a first impression. And so it's very important for people to really, really make sure that they put their best foot forward, whether you're going on a date, and I'm about my bag, right? So it ain't even about dating. It's about getting to that money. And, and you got to make sure that you're taking care of business. Teach Hanley is so phenomenal. Um, they also send us a couple of free gifts. The one that I like the most is the nail kit. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, hey, you got to be rough and tough and rocking with your Afro puffs. I'm not for that, right? I got to make sure that my nails is feeling is, is phenomenal, that everything is groomed. I like to be as smooth as a dolphin. And so in addition to making sure that you get the nail kit, you get some other free gifts, uh, they also giving my people and my viewers a, a special discount. And so make sure you tap the link in the description. Uh, you get 30% off your first order and then 20% off for life. Listen, never done before. They not giving this to anybody else. If you a chaser, if you're looking to go in in a direction that you're supposed to be going in with people that's really rocking with you, make sure you get that 30% off your first order plus 20% off of life. Look, man, you see how smooth my skin is? I'm a dolphin. I'm a 41-year-old dolphin as the recording of this video, of this live stream. If you're not rocking out with tease, you're really, really missing out. Ladies, get it for the fellas. Fellas, don't wait for the ladies to get it for you. Take care of business. Be on top of things. Make sure you get that Tej Hanley. Again, 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. I love you, and I would never, ever advocate for you to get anything that I'm not personally using myself. Make sure you rock out with that Tej Hanley. Do not delay. Do not rock out with any other Tej pack. We absolutely, positively going to do the thing that's in our best interest, and you got to make a great first impression. You only get one time. You never get a second opportunity to make a first impression. Make sure you get that Tej Hanley 30% off. I'm with y'all. What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. How y'all feeling this morning? I got my Tej pack. I got my Tej pack. And I'm feeling good. And I use it this morning. And we running it up and we taking care of the business. How y'all feeling this morning? Y'all feeling great? I'm feeling phenomenal. I, I see you, Cartez Cookie. I see you, Kay Cooper. I see Trap and Slay. I see my dog, your car. Bree Powered is in the building. True to myself. What up, Mr. Youngblood City? What's happening, Brittany B? Let me get one word inside of the chat. You know what? I don't even want to know how y'all feeling because I know y'all feeling good. Let me know where y'all checking in from. Let me know where y'all checking in from. How y'all feel? Y'all feeling rested? You feeling good? Let me know where y'all checking in from. I'm curious. Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Best day to join a Patreon is the beginning of the month. Please don't miss out on Stock Club coming this Friday. I see Texas in the building. What up, Texas? Nashville, Elk Grove, California, Kuwait. What up, though? Uh, I see my Chicagoans, Dallas, Atlanta, Charlotte, Maryland, Texas, Bellwood, Bellwood, Detroit, Atlanta, uh, Spokane, Uptown Detroit, North Miami Beach, Florida. What up, Maryland and my new subscribers? <laughs> Orlando, Lansing, Michigan in the building, San Antonio, California, DMV, Jersey, Diddy Land, shout out to Diddy Land down in Miami, Charleston, South Carolina, Indianapolis, east side of Detroit, Chicago, Columbia, Columbia, Sacramento, Indianapolis in the building, Austin, Virginia, New York, Brooklyn, I see you, uh, Miami-Dade County, what up though, Omaha, Nebraska, what's happening, Florida, Homestead, Texas, Lansing, Tampa, Brightmore, what up Brightmore, what up though? Teflon Tiff is checking in, checking in from Teflon Tiff. <laughs> St. Clair Shore, oh you rich, rich. Oh you rich, what up Shank? St. Clair Shores? Stockton, California in the building, Bay Area, Fort Lauderdale, 
Shout out to Texas DFW, one of my favorite airports, NYC, Atlanta. What up, Connie? Nashville, Grand Perry, Texas. Uh, Grand Rapids, Eagle Pass. Shout out to Eagle Pass, South Carolina, downtown Miami. Miami. Originally from Brooklyn, Montgomery, Alabama. LA in the house, Trenton, New Jersey. Cleveland, South Africa. Let me get a round of applause for South Africa. <laughs> and Turks and Caicos, and Cincinnati, and Austin, Texas, and Hartford, Connecticut, and then last but not least, certainly not least, my Detroit Bridge Ren, Milwaukee, what up, though? And the building, Durban, South Africa, what's happening? What up, what up, what up? I hope y'all tuned in to the greatest morning show on earth. If you have not already, make sure that you send this to your friends and family because we don't want to be successful by ourselves. What up, Quentin? I see you, big dog. K Cooper is in the building. Prince Elian, what up? What up? We gonna get it. Neptune, New Jersey, what up, y'all? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Absolutely the greatest show on earth. What up, P. Shank? I'm gonna read those Super Chats shortly, but first we gotta make sure that we do the thing that's in the best interest of the people. What's in the best interest of the people? Huh? Aside from the T. Chanley. 30% off your first order, 20% off of life. Aside from Teach, you know what it is if you're not a chaser. We got Stock Club coming up on Friday. Uh, got some special live streams. If you guys are not a part of the bag chasers, if you're not a part of the Patreon, the link is pinned to the top of the chat, as well as in the description. Make sure you do the thing that's in your own best interest. And then when you join into the Patreon, if you start with Stock Club and you're not starting with any of the other videos, you're not trying to find out how much I make, that's there too. Mastermind Sessions, that's there too. Uh, real estate videos, updates, that's there too, right? If you're not tapping into that and you just want to get to the stock club stuff first, start at the first stock club that we started in January. That way you're up to speed by the time that we start streaming on Friday exclusively for Patreon members so that you guys can understand exactly how you're supposed to leverage your resources in order to run up that bag, all right? So I don't want y'all sitting here all under duress trying to figure it out. I want you to understand why we're doing what we're doing we break it down from a C student's perspective. We start off by giving you the eight things that we look for when we look into invest in a company. We go through and we show you the charts. We show you the companies that we research it. We also show you what's in our portfolio and we're going to run it up. So we're going to do stock club on Friday, right? And we're going to take care of business and we're going to take care of everything that you're supposed to do in order to continue to be a better person, including working on that character. And then coming up this month, we're going to also announce our first location for our meetup. So it's going to absolutely be awesome. Again, make sure you tap into the Patreon. The best day to do it is the beginning of the month. Uh, and align yourself with a group of people that's going in the direction that you're going in. Somebody asked me, they said, what kind of watch you got on? This is one of my favorite watches. I know I wear the Rolexes a lot, but I've been wearing this one probably for the past two weeks exclusively outside of my Apple Watch. Uh, and this is my Omega Seamaster, right? I bought this in Tampa? I think I bought this in Tampa. Yeah, this is my Omega Seamaster. It's one of my favorite watches. It's uh, blue with rose gold. That's actually rose gold around it and on the a, on a, on a dials and stuff like that. So this is one of my favorite watches. Shout out to Omega, another great watch brand. Um, It was a milestone watch for me, and so I really, really like this watch. It's the only watch that I have with the rubber on the bands. It's nice. So you don't have to just get Rolexes or... Uh, petite Philippe's and all of that other stiff, the stiffy stuff. You can get the stuff that you like, as long as it holds its value. Um, that's all we care about. All right. Uh, after hours was awesome last night, so that's great. And let me do a little bit more housekeeping, and we're gonna get straight into the show. We're gonna get to quick hits. Uh, tonight I will be doing hardly initiated, so I'm expecting for you guys to be tuned in and to see that work, and then afterwards. Uh, I might do it a little bit differently on a Wednesday night show on the Anton Daniels channel. Uh, the Harley Initiated show is 8 p.m. Eastern, so adjust for whatever time zone that you have. Um, and then afterwards, I will be going live on the Anton Daniels channel. It'll probably be some form of a recap in order to give you my thoughts on what's going on. So it won't be a long show. Uh, but we definitely are still live streaming tonight. And it should be interesting. It should be interesting. So I don't know what to expect. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't know who I'm debating against. But... You know I don't care. You know I don't care. What's up, sister? What up, Miss Jennifer? What up to Antonio Watkins, ABJ? What up, all of my friends and family? Y'all ready to get started with the show? Let's get it popping. All right? 
Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. The likes is always a little bit down. Uh, likes for the algorithm. Let's get it popping. All right. I feel like it's something else that I think I need to announce. I feel like it's something else that I need to announce. What is? What am I missing? What am I missing? Huh. I don't know what I'm. I feel like I'm missing something. Want me to do more Patreon videos? All right, I got you. Okay, we gonna rock it out. All right, let's get let's get it popping, y'all. Quick hits. Quick hits is a segment of the show that we like to dedicate to make sure that you guys know what's going on uh, locally, internationally. We don't want to dedicate an entire segment to it, uh, so we break it up and we make sure that we at least give you a few things that's happening throughout the streets uh, that you guys need to be informed about. Uh, shout out to Gam Gam. Shout out to all of the people that's transitioning over from their traditional media to getting into the best morning show slash afternoon show. I see you, SS29. Y'all want to be petty out here in these streets. No worries. No worries. Actually, I don't even want to start off with that. I don't want to start off with that. I want to start off with that. All right, Taiwan. It was a deadly earthquake that hit Taiwan. And there's over 70 miners that's still, that's still trapped. All right, check it out. Be thankful that you don't live in Taiwan right now. That deadly earthquake that rocked Taiwan. Authorities there say 70 miners are trapped in two coal mines. Hundreds more are trapped in tunnels and collapsed buildings. And at least nine people are dead. Hundreds more are said to be injured after the 7.4 quake hit the island during morning rush hour. It's the strongest earthquake there in 25 years. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore has the latest. A massive 7.4 magnitude earthquake shaking the entire island of Taiwan at 7.58 local time, sending buildings toppling to the ground. The strongest earthquake to hit Taiwan in 25 years, leaving destruction in its wake. This building in Hualien collapsing on its first floor, while another was left leaning at an angle. With public transit shut down across the island, disrupting the morning commutes of 23 million people and sending them running for their lives. These videos showing apartments rocking back and forth, shelves falling over from the chaos. In Taipei, monitors in a newsroom could be seen violently shaking amid the ongoing quake, while a warehouse crumbled into rubble, unable to withstand the tremors. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore joins me now with the latest. Marcus, Taiwanese authorities now saying 70 miners are trapped in two coal mines. Hundreds more are trapped in tunnels and collapsed buildings. What's the latest on the search and rescue efforts? Well, uh, Diane, the, the search and rescue efforts are, are well underway, and as you can imagine, they're, they're quite urgent. We, we know that, uh, according to officials this morning, that uh, 70 miners are trapped in two different uh, rock quarries there. As we see pictures of the, the violent shaking, we understand that the, the two quakes that occurred this morning have left those, those miners trapped, and we don't know um, any other information at this point about how far in the mine they are or, or whether uh, officials have been able to make contact contact with them, but we do know that they are the focus of what's really been a massive response to this earthquake. As you mentioned, it happened right around rush hour, just a couple of minutes before 8 a.m., and we've seen the, seen the videos where uh, people were in their cars, on, on motorcycles, or, or on trains um, headed to various destinations uh, when these two earthquakes struck, which, by the way, Diane, are considered to be shallow earthquakes. We're talking about uh, the first one was about 21 miles deep. Uh, the other had a depth of seven miles. And uh, again, they're considered shallow, which means the damage is often much worse than what we find with uh, earthquakes that happen uh, much deeper. Uh, Marcus, so far there have already been more than 100 aftershocks since the quake hit. How long can we expect these aftershocks to last? And do you think we could see more damage as a result? Uh, yeah, I mean, without a doubt, Diane, I mean, if you look back to the earthquake that, that we covered in, uh, in Turkey um, uh, a year ago, uh, these earthquakes, these aftershocks go on for quite some time, and they can be quite significant. The initial quakes were uh, 7.2 uh, and 6.5. You can have a, an aftershock of either equal or, or lesser intensity, but a, a 5.0 magnitude quake can still cause damage. And that's one of the big concerns that officials have um, as they enter a holiday 
holiday, a long holiday weekend uh, known as the uh, Tomb Sweeping uh, Festival where uh, many honor their ancestors at burial sites uh, because of the risk of aftershocks. Authorities are, are urging people to stay put, uh, stay where they are because there could be more landslides and also uh, further damage uh, from those aftershocks. That's unfortunate. Uh, make sure you guys send up your prayers. I don't know why we divide ourselves. Only time that it seems like we ever come together and we start to be concerned about our fellow man is when we have a disaster. Then all of the, the, the dividing and, and the arguing and separating ourselves based off of things that we can't control, like race, all of that stuff then goes out the window um, when we see a disaster. So make sure that y'all send a prayer up. I know a lot of us don't want to pay attention to stuff that's happening outside of the United States of America because we are America first. Uh, but at the same time, these are people with souls and children and jobs and life circumstances and things like that. So um, I'm very thankful of where I live. Uh, somebody asked in the chat, was there any tsunamis? I heard that there was a, um, I don't know if you would define it as a tsunami, but there was, um, it was felt off of the coast of China. Japan had a little bit of a wave. I don't know if it was any um, tall or anything like that, but I'm, I'm staying on top of it. This is pretty much breaking news and we're learning about it as we go. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys stay informed of what was happening internationally uh, because I don't like to see people suffer at all, at all. So I am very thankful for where I live at and uh, we praying for those miners. Let me see if I can get myself back together. Apparently I lost my visibility but anyways while i'm getting myself back together uh, let me also keep you informed of what's happening with the next story uh, over in michigan the largest fentanyl bus in the state's history uh, now let's move to what police are calling one of the largest drug busts ever in Michigan. Dozens of kilos of fentanyl and other dangerous narcotics now off the streets. What began with a traffic stop in Livonia led to searches of two locations in Detroit and another in Clinton Township. Victor Williams shows us what investigators found. So if you're looking at this map right here, a lot of people are not familiar with uh, Detroit. What we call these places is the Metro Detroit area. So, um... When a lot of times when people say that they're from Detroit when they're out of town, they say, oh, man, I'm just from Detroit. It's because you don't know anything about Livonia. Like, nobody is going to recognize what Livonia is if you say you're from Livonia unless you more, more than likely have visited from Michigan or you know have some family members in Michigan or something like that, right? Um, so a lot of times people say they're from Detroit, but they're from the surrounding areas, which we call the Metro Detroit area. Um, so they, when they name places like Livonia or Clinton Township, those are surrounding cities around the city itself. Uh, but let's continue. Found. Just what a great job by the Livonia Police Department. All of this fentanyl, meth, and even other drugs seized. All this amounts to about $4.5 million on the streets, but even more, this could kill a whole lot of people. The dangers are astronomical. It's the largest fentanyl seizure in the history of Michigan. 41 kilos now taken off the streets. There's no doubt in my mind that the seizure of this quantity of fentanyl has saved, saved lives, not only in Livonia, but also in the surrounding jurisdictions in southeast Michigan. Captain Greg Yon says the street value of all the drugs is around 4.5 million. Cops ended up confiscating fentanyl, meth, and cocaine. 150 grand in cash, several pieces of high-end jewelry, multiple guns, along with the machinery used to turn the dangerous drugs into pill form. We've seized approximately 100,000 pills. These pills are being disguise, disguised with these pill presses in the different colorations. So a user thinks that they're buying maybe a Xanax bar because it looks exactly like one that's pharmaceutical grade. But how did Livonia PD make this historic bust? Apparently it all stemmed from a traffic stop back in September. From there, officers secured a search warrant for two other properties, including this gas station on Livernois and a home believed to be a stash house on Littlefield Street. Hazmat, you know, full body suits, mask, mm -hmm. whole shot. This man was shocked seeing the raid take place next door, especially when he never saw anything out of the ordinary. Shock, devastation and surprise. Barry Willis out of Clinton Township is now facing several federal charges in connection to the crime. Officers even confiscated more at his home on Dorchester Court. It just goes to show that you never know what's going on next door. Now that I know, I'm relieved. 
because I had no idea. You guys have to be very, very careful with what you consume nowadays. I know it's very popular to smoke. Uh, the users have now become more popular than the dealers. The dealers is down here chopping it up and, and you know what I'm saying, basically stepping on it with fentanyl and horse tranquilizers. And y'all don't know what y'all getting no more. It ain't, it, look, it ain't even safe, let alone cool. Uh, to be in the drug game nowadays. And so y'all got to be careful, honestly. Like, whatever your habit is, this should scare you straight. People are literally dying. They're dying from being overdosed on stuff that's coming into this country that shouldn't be in this country based off of the fact that we can't even secure our borders. So this stuff is not even coming from here in the United States of America. This stuff is being peddled here, but it's made outside of outside of the United States of America, a lot of times they say that the majority of the fentanyl that comes into this country is coming from China. So, um, yeah, good job to the police officers for this bus because we don't want this type of stuff on the streets. But y'all really, really need to be careful because it's in everything. It's in everything that y'all got your hands on. Uh, and then last but not least, one of the most disrespectful things that we've seen today so far it's always a modern woman that's leveraging her kids in order to get something off. But this time she's leveraging her kids in order to, I guess, peddle drugs. Check it out. A mobile mother's behind bars in Metro after sheriff's deputies say they found guns and almost half a million dollars worth of cocaine. But investigators say that's just the beginning. Our Dacian Smith is in the studio tonight with more on this story. Dacian, you're told children were put in danger. That's right. The sheriff says when deputies got to the woman's house, one of her children was actually wearing a backpack full of cocaine, and that's why they hope she stays in jail for a while. Several kilos of cocaine are now off the street after deputies say a mobile mother put her four children in serious danger. Investigators say this all started when the sheriff's office received a tip about 35 year old Tierra Hill having a large amount of cocaine at her house on Harvey Court. Sheriff Paul Burt says she was seen leaving the house on Saturday but was caught soon after. You know, they received some information that she may be delivering some cocaine. There was a traffic stop conducted where you know she was ultimately found to be in possession of about a, a pound or a kilo and a half of cocaine along with a firearm. But that was just the beginning. When investigators searched the house, they say they found Hill's four children, ages three to 15 years old. They say the three-year-old was wearing a backpack with around two kilos of cocaine in it. The sheriff says they also found another backpack with one kilo of cocaine and two handguns nearby. There are a lot of possibilities that could have occurred had the children, number one, ingested any of the cocaine or been exposed to it. You know, and then you've got these young children, you know, have handguns within their reach as well. MCSO says all of the cocaine is worth around $450,000. Jail records show Hill has been in and out of Metro Jail almost 10 times in the last few years, and they hope she won't be going anywhere soon. It's just alarming to me that a mother would allow their children to be exposed to these type of things. You know, she has to see a judge before a bond is set. You know, but, you know, my, my two cents is she ought to sit her butt in jail until she goes to trial. I mean, she subjected those children to some extremely dangerous situations. Yep, and it's a strong possibility that the criminal justice system uh, will allow for her to get out even though she's endangered children, she's leveraging her children, a lot of times what you see with children uh, carrying drugs and stuff is because a lot of times people know or the parents know or the mother knows that the kid is not going to go to jail if they get caught with such things inside of their backpack or they're using the children as mules. So they're basically putting their children uh, future in the hands of somebody else once the children get caught because they're more worried about themselves going to jail than worried about the, the mental health of their children. And kids don't forget. I think a lot of times we think that kids got really short memories or all oh, they're not going to remember or they don't even know what's going on. Kids are very, very smart. Very smart. And so now people have become so degenerate in this, this, this space, this culture, the ways in which we subject our children to and the things that we subject ourselves to have become so degenerate that they're leveraging their children as drug mules in order to make money 
and they don't care about the mental health of the children or the future of the children themselves. It's sad. It's very, 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 very sad. But ladies and gentlemen, that is your quick hits. Jesus. Uh, let me read some of the super chats and then we're going to go ahead and get it popping with the show. Shout out to Shen C in the building. I appreciate you, Shen C, for holding me down. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Dre the Dream with the super sticker. Thank you, Dre. I appreciate you, big dog. Uh, Zay Stone says, I got this super sticker and this super chat for you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. I absolutely positively appreciate you. P. Shank says, good morning, Mr. Anton Daniels and a Millionaire Morning Show. Good morning to you, P. Shank. I'm glad to see you here. Sister, Mr. AD, what happened with the Harley initiated debate? Oh, we got that popping tonight. We got that popping tonight, sis. I don't even know who I'm facing. Uh, sis says, Mr. AD, I think your Detroit brethren are not having it. Detroit is thriving the way that, that way, and they wanted to keep it that way. Look, man, I, I was walking downtown, sis, and I seen them putting up the... They were constructing the thing. I don't know what you called it. They were constructing the thing from scratch that they will be actually having the NFL draft in downtown. I said, look at how beautiful this city is becoming. Thriving, credit rating upgrades, debts paid, uh, downtown booming, outside uh, neighborhoods are starting to come back up. Livernois Avenue of Fashion is absolutely going great. I was on a um, coaching call yesterday, and you can see my background. And in my background, it was showing the, raw, the water, the river, right? And it was like, man, that river is dope. I've never seen Detroit before like that. And I said, oh, yeah, that's Canada right there. And it was like, wait a minute, that's what? I said, yeah, it's the Detroit River, right? The Great Lakes is the largest, the largest body of fresh water in, in, in the world. Right. That's the Great Lakes right there. Or I, I couldn't show them the Great Lakes. I said the Great Lakes is that's one of the reasons why the Midwest is going to be dope, so dope going in the future and why I'm investing all of my money. And then I say, yeah, man, this is Detroit over here. And that's Canada right there. It was like, that's Canada. I'm like, yes, bro, that's Canada. That's why they invested so much money in the Riverwalk. But yeah, man, it's a great place to be. I'm going to be hosting my own personal. Uh, my rooftop is going to be open, opening for the penthouse that I got. And so I'm going to be personally hosting my own draft party. Uh, and it's going to be dope. It's going to be absolutely dope. So I'm, I'm very excited for my city and what things are becoming, especially how I had to endure through all of the bad times, which is one of the reasons I'm so hard on people in other cities. Like, yo, stay in your city and endure through it. I endured through what was happening in my city. Y'all do the same. Uh, Antonio Watkins says, you are a bag chaser, but that's the wrong type of bags, Anton. <laughs> that fentanyl. Yeah, that's crazy. What up, Messi? Says, best content on YouTube. Keep it up. Thank you, Messi. I appreciate you for tapping in, baby. Uh, Travis Rivas says, mom said it's hard out here and she ain't trying to see Nate. <laughs> Shouldn't even be having kids selling that box and that putting that stuff, that work inside of them kids' backpack. Um, J-Dub says, have you covered the story of the woman who put her children's father address online and said, why is he still alive? Didn't he snitch on you all? The father is not. No. Did y'all send that to me? Email that to me. I might not even do that just for the Millionaire Morning Show. That might be an Anton Daniels story right there. Drake Leo 21 says, <laughs> the, the sticker symbol, uh, sticker for, or the, uh, the ticker symbol for, for box is dollar sign B-O-X-X is down. Projected loss is 30% by 2000. Man, listen, bro. It's bad out here in these streets. Shout out to Slant Sales Car says, good morning, Anton. Good morning to you, and God bless you too, my friend. No, I didn't. Did I miss a super chat? What super chat I miss? Shen C, Dre the Dream, Zay Stone, P. Shank, Sister, Antonio Watkins, Messy Mathematician, Travis Rebus, J-Dubs, Drake Leo 21, and Slant Sales Cars. Which one did I miss? I got every single super chat that's on here. Every last one of them. Yep. Yep. I also want to give, give an acknowledgement to the Cash Apper. Shout out to the Cash Apper. Uh, first on Cash App, of course, I got to acknowledge my dog, Mike That Dude. Shout out to Mike That Dude. I appreciate you, big dog. Uh, Cornelius Jackson. Jesus. Hit me with a 50 ball. I said, what's up, Cornelius? 
Mike Cal, shout out to Michael. I appreciate you, big dog, for hitting me up. Charles Pratt says, I'm rocking with you and soaking up the game. Thanks for the motivation. Shout out to Charles Pratt on Cash App. I appreciate everybody that contributes into the platform. I don't ask for it, but I always want to acknowledge the people that hold me down. Oh, you sent it before it went live? I'm sorry about that, Travis Revis. I have not seen it. Let me see. Travis. I don't see it, my friend. But listen, um, tell me what you said, and I definitely want to acknowledge what you sent, Travis, because I just don't see it on my software. For whatever reason, my software is not pulling it up. I'm sorry about that, Trash. What up, Ash? I'm sorry about that. Just send me a message, and then I'll definitely highlight it, but I don't see it in my on my back end, so I'm sorry about that, my friend. But thank you for contributing into the platform. I really, I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, I do appreciate you. I didn't know that, that that's what happened. So um, I'll, I'll go back and I'll make sure I acknowledge it. And if I don't get to it today, then I'm definitely going to research it and make sure I acknowledge you in the morning. All right. Thank you, my friend. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into the show. Let's get it popping. So actually, you know what? I don't even want to start there. I really don't even want to start there. I want to start here. I was going to save this for last. I was going to save this for last. But what I will do is this: we're going to acknowledge it first. Let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. Let's get the riffraff out of the way so that we can go ahead and get it popping, all right? Tiffany Hanyard is the gift that keeps on giving. Now, Tiff, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of sick of you. I am. I'm, gen I'm genuinely sick of Tiffany Hanyard. At first, it was funny. Then it became tragic. Now it's just becoming annoying and it's, being, it's becoming unfortunate. And part of the reason that it's unfortunate is because I understand that Tiffany Henyard is stuck between a rock and a hard place. She was not qualified for the job that she signed up for. But everybody thinks that they can run a city. Who don't think that they could be mayor? You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, don't worry about it. I can manage a multi-million dollar budget every single year. I can make sure that the police is funded. I can go ahead and build some stuff for the community, give some handouts, hand out some turkeys, and everything going to be all right. And I'm going to promote myself on social media. Hey, it's a super mayor Tiffany in your... I'm, I, I don't want to hear it. I, honestly, honestly. And I, and I am mindful about the idea that she was not ready or prepared and did not have the business acumen, nor does she have the understanding of what it takes in order to be a great leader. So now, the residents of Dalton, because they decided to be a part of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Club, is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Where's the rock and where's the hard place? The rock is, they voted based off of identity politics and popularity. Not business acumen and understanding and good character. That's the rock. The hard place is, Tiffany can't resign. She can't. Even if she wanted to, even if she's tired, even if she's stressed out. I'm sure she's losing sleep over her bad decisions to do some of the things that she did. She can't retire. Why? Because she has two combined jobs that pay her an egregious amount of money. And so even if she wanted to, I don't think that she's doing it for the people right now. She's doing it because she has to make sure that she keep that bag coming in on a regular basis and the walls are closing in. Even if you want to remove all of the FBI investigations and all of that stuff, the walls are closing in. Why? Because eventually, this is not a lifetime job. This is not the Supreme Court. You are going to have to give up that position when people vote you out if they do the thing that's best in their best interest. Because we all know that you don't have the business acumen, nor do you have the ability or the character to be transparent enough to really, really be able to take care of and run a city. Everybody not built for it. Everybody feel like they can based off of a popularity contest, but it's not the thing that's best for you. You cannot do the job to the, to the satisfaction. Should you be on a marketing team if they had a marketing position? Apps, sure, sure, sure. You good will bring in visibility to the city. May not necessarily be good visibility, but visibility to the city. Um, but, but part of leadership is optics, and this is the thing that people are missing. Part of leadership is optic. It's not just whether or not you're good or bad at the job, and we, you can make that determination for yourself, especially for the residents in the city of Dalton because you're the ones that got to deal with it, but it's also 
whether or not you're painting the city in a good light. Whether you're painting the city in a good light, okay? So let's go ahead and see what the latest debacle is because it's like, can't stay out of the news. I don't know. It's almost like can't get right. Can't get right. Just can't stay out of the news to save your life. It's like, you know, I look at Diddy. <laughs> Very bad example, but we're going to go there. I look at Diddy, and the one thing about Diddy is that everybody is talking around him or about him, but Diddy ain't talking. Diddy is just, he just, can't nobody hold me down. Oh, Lord, I got to keep it moving. Diddy is chilling. If you see him, he's going to be riding his bike. He ain't talking. He ain't made no statements. He ain't kicking it with people. He probably turned his comments off on Instagram. He ain't trying to do no podcast. He's just slow motion. He's just going to wait. And if it all blow over, go into the sunset and chill. Maybe. Maybe. But Tiff just can't stay out of the news. I mean, every single time you turn the internet on, it's like tap 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 tap. Let's see what she did this time. How long have you lived in Dalton? Thirty-eight years. Have you ever not been able to get into Village Hall? One time, not one time. Yet another surprise for residents of South Suburban Dalton who now say they can't get into their own village hall. This after some residents were locked out of a village board meeting last night. The village is blaming safety concerns, but residents are pointing the finger at embattled Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Tonight, our Dane Placco has the latest controversy from Dalton. And then I went to reach for the doors. You can't go in. Wait a minute. No offense. Y'all do know this is a government building. Dalton resident Cheryl Hill used her cell phone to document what happened when she tried to get some paperwork at Dalton's Village Hall last week. So what you mean? Why people can't come in there? Yeah. Why people can't come in there? New security procedures went into effect last week. The village says in response to threats against controversial Mayor Tiffany Henyard and village employees. It used to be the Dalton residents who needed to take care of a bill or a license perhaps would walk in the main entrance right here. And then they would go into this common area where you'd see the service desks back there. But now it's all locked right here. Excuse me? Now residents have to talk to a security guard behind a window in the vestibule and conduct their business in that small cramped area. Young lady showed up earlier this morning, went in and was totally upset. She had no idea that she could not go into the building. Just the foyer had to do her paperwork standing outside in the rain. We are being treated as the resident, I say we, as, as though we were in prison in our, in our own town, in a place where we pay taxes. That message of exclusion amplified last night when about 25 Dalton residents were locked out of a village board meeting as those inside blasted Henyard during public comment. I wouldn't trust this woman if she stood on a stack of Bibles and had her tongue notarized. Not a damn thing she says comes out her mouth is true. The meeting ended early when four opposition trustees walked out, saying there was ample room for the crowd and refusing entry to all would violate the Illinois Open Meetings Act. Well, the meeting was adjourned because we have to have enough space, so we have to, the Open Meetings Act requires that, the, uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. As you just saw, is chaos amongst our four trustees. They didn't come here to handle the business. They came here to do a political theater stunt, which you just saw. As for the decision to lock the doors on Village Hall, a Henyard spokesperson blames, quote, threats of violence as a result of the continuous misinformation portrayed by the media and <laughs> Internet bloggers who are using Dalton as a means to generate ratings and revenue. Our staff and elected officials have received several disturbing communications via emails, social media, phone calls, and visitors from across the country. As such, our security protocols have changed. So it's our fault. Portray, portray continuous misinformation now. Now, uh, let's, let's address this right now. Threats of violence as a result 
of continuous misinformation. What, which, which part of it is false? We love to correct it. I even invited you on the platform. Misinformation portrayed by the media and internet bloggers. Which part of it is false? Tell me. Did you go to Vegas? Mm. <laughs> mm. Did you go to Vegas? Did anything happen in Vegas that wasn't supposed to be happening in Vegas that didn't stay in Vegas? Mm. What part of this conversation is misinformation? I'm just curious. What part of it? Because all I did was react to what the media said. Media reported something. The people reported something. I had people come up here that was close to you that wind up losing a job or leaving or getting fired or something. They said, listen, this was my experience. What part of it is, is, is misinformation? Okay. All right. Cool. So now she's getting threats of violence. All right. I don't believe that people should be threatening anybody, let alone, listen, whether you think she did her job or not, good, cool, but you, nobody should be threatening anybody, all right? Um, who are using Dalton as a means to generate ratings and revenue. Who knew that a small uh, metro Chicago, Illinois town can generate so much money? Millions of views. Millions upon millions of views. Our staff and elected officials have received several disturbing communications via email, social media, phone calls, and visitors from across the country as such our security protocols have changed. Man, they are running this like the Carter. And visitors from across the country as such our security protocols have changed. But residents we talk to believe the mayor is hiding behind a security threat to keep them out of her business. Because she have a lot of things she have to hide. She have to account for uh, the money that's being spent. In Dalton, Dane Placco, Fox 32 Chicago. All right, so Tiffany, um, babe, again, I think that you stuck between a rock and a hard place, and it's very difficult for us to really try to resolve this because we know that you're not trying to step down. At the same time, I think that the people in the residence of Dalton probably deserve you because they're the ones that voted you in. And, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're really at an impasse. We're, we're, at, we're at an impasse. What do you think, guys, in the chat? What do you think, guys, in the chat? I mean, Christopher Chapman. Roland Martin got finessed. Angela Yee got finessed. She won't even do their podcast that's supposed to, she pulled the podcast down that was supposed to expose all of the things that she got going on. Freedom of Information Act can't even get these people um, to reveal how they how they moving and, and to give all of the stuff and to pay all of the, the vendors and stuff. Police cars about to get repossessed, man, it's crazy, it's crazy. So Tiff, Tiff, uh, I would say that I'm praying for you, but I didn't and I don't wanna lie. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my dog, Travis Revis, says, uh, would love to see a show with Q and Quentin discussing topics with AD being a moderator. Both had valid points last night. Show was amazing. <laughs> shout out to Travis Revis. That is a good idea. I thought that last night's show was popping. I thought that last night's After Hours, After Hours is becoming something of a superstar in my stable of of channels after hours is incredible honestly thank you to travis revis and thank you to your car and the moderators for making sure that they get that super chat so that i can read it because i don't want to forget anything that anybody said definitely want to acknowledge the people seminole 2014 says the fair fed chair jerome powell is live right now on cnbc yahoo finance giving remarks at the stanford university about the economic outlook of the country we're gonna cover that tomorrow we want to get the whole synopsis we're going to let everybody else do the summary, and then we're going to break it down from a C-student's perspective. So we're going to cover that tomorrow. Uh, Salt, shout out to Salt, says, Revelations 3 and 18, I see what you've done, now see what I've done. I've opened a door before you that no one can slam shut. You don't have much strength. I know that. You used what you had to keep my word. You didn't deny me uh, when times... Etc. Etc. 
Shout out to Salt. Thank you for holding me down. And we do not deny our God and our Jesus. Uh, Eric Harris says she's blaming AD. No, nah, it's much bigger vloggers than went over there. I ain't even got over to the Dalton yet. Much bigger. They be live streaming the events as it happened. And so I just kept coming in at the end. And I'll be like, what's going on? Oh, man, Tiffany Hangard again? Let's see what we got going on out here. Jason Stakem says, not trusted even a, with a notarized tongue is wow. Hey, on the low, I think she kind of set that up. She had practiced that before she came into the meeting. Like, I'm going to say I wouldn't trust you on a stack of Bibles even with a notarized tongue. I think she kind of set that up. Michael Anderson says, Tiffany got a case of the can't help it's. She needs Jesus. Real talk. Shaking my head. Shout out to Michael Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Shout out to you. Allie Downing says, morning, end time. Appreciate all that you do. Shout out to Allie Downing. Karma and kerosene says, Biden slash Hanger for 2024. I'm with it. I'm with it. I think that that's the ticket. I love my ad block. Says Lil Wayne slash Tiffany uh, on Detox needs to go. Shout out to I love my ad block in the building. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Y'all ready to get into the real thick of things? I think so. So uh, minimum wage. Let's start off with minimum wage. All right. Minimum wage in California is changing the landscape of business. It's changing the landscape of the people, the workers, everything. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. They saying that it's a wage war over there in California. It's a forced fast food pay bump creating a divide between the mom and pops and the chains. And now Shout out to Rita C. I'm definitely going to be reading that super chat shortly. Give me a second, baby. All business owners are asking, can they even compete? CBS 13's Madison Keevy live for us with insight from a Citrus Heights business owner and getting answers. Madison. Listen, we know you've likely heard a lot about this story over the last few months and weeks, but tonight, a new angle. A local business owner, California Burgers, is up against a lot as a small business and now adding $20 minimum wage to that list. Fresh out of the fryer, over on the grill. This is California burgers. This Citrus Heights staple has been cooking up fresh food for 30 years. We're just trying to make make do essentially, you know, just to get past this, you know, this tough year. Things got tougher Monday. New in California, a pay bump for fast food workers at restaurants with 60 or more locations. We already have a problem retaining employees as it is for uh, this line of work. And now it's gonna be even more difficult when someone can go to like a McDonald's and get paid $20 an hour. Fast food workers at chains will now make at least $20 an hour. The same job at a family owned restaurant, $16 an hour. You know, they never had to put the official minimum wage for California uh, at $20 an hour, which a 25%, 20 to 25% pay bump is crazy. 20 to 25% pay bump is crazy, but they never had to put the minimum wage up to that for every business because they're going to give you a white lie. A white lie is a little bit of truth mixed into it or not the full truth told, and so it's a white lie. It's like playing poker, right? And then somebody says, you got it? You got the best hand? And I'm trying to get them to fold, so I got my poker face on. And then they say, you got it? And I say, hey, man, I got you beat. And then they say, wait a minute, you got, you got a full house? You got aces full, don't you? And you be like. And then they fold, and they show you their hand. And then you didn't have it, but you had a hand that was slightly better than theirs. But then you continue on with the lie because you want them to believe that, that they guessed it correctly, even though technically they just said that you have it. You had it, but you didn't have the hand that they think that you had. So what happens is it's called a white lie. It's like you telling a piece of the truth, but you're not telling the full truth. And that's what's happening with minimum wage. What they're doing is in order to get it passed, the only thing that they had to do was assign it to fast food workers. Why? Because very few people actually, fast food doesn't ring beautifully in people's ears. And so if I say, okay, well, I'm going to raise the, the minimum wage 
up to a minimum of $20 an hour, and it's going to continue to accelerate over the period of time. Then I don't have to raise the minimum wage for everybody because now I'm forcing you to compete when they could just go over to McDonald's. And so by default, you have to raise your minimum wage up to a certain amount to compete to keep the same type of workers. Why? Because the market is going to dictate how much you pay for people based off of what the minimum expectation is at these other places and these easier barriers to entry. It's like if you got a, 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 a plant job over here and they paying $21 an hour starting and you can go to McDonald's and you can just chill on the fries, why would you go over there and break your back for $21 when you can go over to McDonald's and make $20 an hour? See what I'm saying? So then you're artificially artificially dictating what the market is doing instead of letting capitaliz capitalization and the mar market dictate itself. The free market is not really a free market when you have legislators manipulating how much people are getting paid and then that's what then caused the chaos with the business owners, the workers, and then accelerated innovation, which then caused the workers to eventually get laid off because you don't need any people anymore. Why would McDonald's want to continue to pay you $20 an hour? Because they have to when they can just get kiosk, they can implement AI. They'd rather spend the money trying to figure out how to get rid of you than spending the money investing in you. That's minimum wage in Sacramento County. Absolutely, it's going to impact us. The concerns at one business echoed by an expert. Real world impacts are already being seen. Businesses are potentially looking at reducing hours, laying off employees. Are customers impacted? California. Oh, poker has everything to do with lying. Poker has everything to do with lying. Absolutely. 100%. And poker, you're not even playing the cards, you're playing the people. Burgers co-owner Theodore Leonardos explains. Our margins are already pretty tight and it's not like we can just raise prices because everyone always seems like they're tight on funds, which we understand. Can't really do that because it's just you're pricing people out. What feels like a lose lose for Leonardos is another reason he hopes locals will stop here over the big guys. Nope, he's wrong. So if not money, then what the owners here at California Burgers tell me that they can offer flexible schedules in a way that the big corporations, the McDonald's just simply can't. All right, Madison, thank you. And there was a lot of controversy over which chains were exempt from this law, like places that bake their own bread, when allegations arose that Panera, the franchise owner, also donated to the Newsom campaign. The law says fast food restaurants and airports, hotels, event centers, theme parks, museums, and other locations, they are all exempt. So are restaurants in certain grocery stores. And that's how you get around that, is that you grease a couple palms, and then they're going to create some laws with some slight modifications to it that allow for you to be exempt because you friends and you telling me that businesses is just competing. How? When you can grease a palm and get the law kind of modified to make sure that you, you're the one that benefit from it. That's not competing. That's not a free market. When you can manipulate the market based off of what's best for you and your friends, or based off of what you want to do in order to get voted back into office because you got a bunch of liberals that live inside of your state, that's not a free market. That's not businesses competing. That's you manipulating the market and then forcing businesses to meet your expectations. That's a difference. That's not a free market. That's a manipulated market. It's much different. All right? Um, here's another take on uh, MSNBC or CNBC about uh, this fast food hike. And I believe that this is coming straight from a McDonald's California franchisee that owns multiple different stores. Now joining us with an on the ground take on the new fast food minimum wage in California is Scott Roderick, a McDonald's franchisee in California. He owns and operates 18 restaurants in the northern part of the state. And Scott, why don't you just tell us what it's meant from your perspective? Well, good morning, Becky. Thank you for having me. Uh, the day has now dawned upon us where countless operators in California face this $20 wage. It impacts 15,000 restaurants up and down the state of California. It's going to be the most serious challenge for entrepreneurs that do business on the franchising platform. The vast majority of these restaurants run by small business proprietors who do business on the franchising platform, and the vast majority being family-owned and operated just like my restaurants. 
you know, I, I, I want to underscore the, the words family owned because franchisees are not large global corporations. The restaurant brands that we franchise uh, might be national in name, but franchisees are local business operators. It's and that's the thing that people don't understand. It's, it's <sighs> legislators and uh, casual observers that don't understand how money works or don't understand business. Um, they don't really understand. They don't get it. They don't understand how this works. They're saying, well, McDonald's is the ones, the large corporations. No, that's not how McDonald's make their money. People don't understand how McDonald's itself makes their money. A franchisor or a franchisee is the person that then has to spend the money in order to be able to hire the people and then serve the community, whatever the product is that they're selling. And so when you talk about a small business owner, a small business owner may have to put up everything and invest all of their capital into making sure that they can open up the business. And then they just bas they basically paying licensing fees and they buying the products from whatever the, the, the franchise that they look, you know, that they're franchising from the, the store that they're franchising from. And so people don't understand that these are local operators. These are people that sometimes often at times live in the very communities that they're serving. They're business owners. They created a job for themselves and then they created jobs for other people and they're serving their community. And a lot of you, you don't understand the fact that small businesses is the backbone of America. Small businesses often turn into large businesses. Small businesses often turn into initial public offerings and they go public. Right. This is the way that America was able to really grow and outpace everybody else. Um, once you got into the modern age of people being able to choose for themselves of what it is that they wanted to do, right? And that's why capitalism, although not perfect, has been a way that the American society has largely pulled itself above everybody else and been much more profitable, and we have less poverty here than we do in any other part of the world. These are local owners and operators of these businesses, and then we're tying it to a natu national chain that then says, well, the national chain itself has over 60 locations, but the franchisee doesn't. The franchisee is not a part of the national chain. They're just basically licensing the name, licensing the name, the business acumen, and the products in order to invest in it themselves so that they don't have to create another brand and market it on an individual level, right? So it's not as clean cut as all oh, man Starbucks. McDonald's, Burger King. It's not that simple. It's an important fact that somehow it seems to get lost in the legislation that was crafted. And as you stated earlier regarding it is absolutely the intended consequences. And for many, what makes this legislation unprecedented, let alone extraordinary, is that it only benefits employees who work in franchise restaurants. Uh, whether you own one single donut shop or 10 donut shops in California, if you're part of a franchise brand with 60 or more locations, the new wage mandate is going to apply to you. And, and as you just stated, this is an extraordinary wage jump, 25% overnight. It's a serious concern for two reasons. First, it targets only fast food restaurants. And second, the sheer scale of the impact is just breathtaking. Um, historically, as you said about steps, step laddered approach, you know, many cities have studied and put forth living wages with annual CPI bumps. Certainly the, the city that I opened my first McDonald's in, San Francisco, is one great example of that. They chose a fair living wage, they set a annual CPI cap, and it allows us to plan for that as small business owners. It's fair to the employees, and it's fair to people who create the jobs. We've already heard that some pizza delivery stores, for instance, have, have laid off or gotten rid of a thousand jobs or more ahead of this, that they're just not going to do that anymore. They'll use the Uber and Lyft uh, apps to go ahead and have deliveries done that way. Uber and Lyft don't have to abide by that because their employees are not employees, they're contractors. You look at these Which we're going to get into that, that in a minute. This. What are you doing in preparation? Are you going to lay people off or are you going to find other ways to make up and, and make good for that 25% increase in wages? Well, Obviously, my team is focusing on every possible action to survive and maybe even thrive in the tumult that's going to start today. Uh, obviously, one of the most critical levers that you know I can use as a business owner is price, but I certainly can't charge $20 for a Happy Meal. 
So I have got to be aggressive in seeking labor efficiencies to drive the top line. I've got it. What does that mean to seek labor efficiencies? It means that whereas you had two, three, four people, hopefully one person can do the job before while getting a 25% pay increase. That's what it, that's what it means. That's what it means. It means you're going to have less people doing more work because they want to get paid more money. And then on top of that, it also means that we're looking to figure out how we can implement technology to where we won't need more people and we can minimize the impact of what's going on. That's what it means. That's what it means. And then hopefully we can minimize the amount of money that we have to pass over into the consumer spending in order to keep these people because our margins were already thin accelerate the digital channels even more. I've got to promote more off-premise delivery. Families are going to have to make very hard choices around capital X expenditures, for example. <laughs> Can I postpone updating a restaurant dining room? Can I put off investing in a new rooftop HVAC? And even the bigger question, should I open a new restaurant in California against these extraordinary legislative headwinds? Uh, the topic of the day seems to focus on the obvious move to cut labor or reduce staff size, but frankly, at least in my organization, that's the last thing I want to do. The, the, the real thing that we should be paying attention to is, A, how many businesses are going to be closing, because then that erodes the tax base, both from a corporate level and on an individual level. That's number one, because California is already operating at a deficit. And then the second thing that we need to be asking ourselves is, will that not only stifle but cause a retraction in the amount of businesses that would open in California. Because why go do business in California when you can go and invest somewhere else where the labor laws is not as egregious? So I'll keep an eye on it. Um, I've been keeping an eye on it for a while now. I definitely keep an eye on it. Let me give a round of applause to my girl. Shout out to Rita C. You know what? I love that name, Rita. I love that name, Rita C. Shout out to Rita C. Uh, holding me down and making sure that she continue to add value into my life. Um, thank you, Rita. It does not go, go unnoticed. And you guys know that I'm very appreciative of anybody that contributes anything to the platform. And I'm always going to acknowledge you, whether it's a dollar or whatever. Rita, you don't have to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are very much appreciated, my love. Thank you. And you don't even say nothing. You just come through and drop that off and say, what up, though? Thank you, Rita. LLC says if the people are really threatening Tiffany at this point, then the lookout for security purposes makes sense objectively. That's one perspective. Okay, I hear you. Or maybe she can leave and we ain't gonna have to worry about that. I don't know. J Dub says I emailed you that story. I appreciate you. Okay, J Dub, I'm gonna check that out. Kings of Kings says there's a McDonald's I can go to that has all robots. Hmm. I'll be curious to see when that comes online. I'm, I'm curious as to, as to see where that is. Uh, Calvin Booker says, Umar was banned from going live on all platforms. Really? Really? Interesting. Why would they ban him from going live on all platforms? I don't care for Umar Johnson at all. I don't care for Umar Johnson at all. However... However, I don't like censorship. I think that that man should be able to go live. Let me throw Omar a bone. I know y'all not used to this. I'm not a fan of him. But I don't think that Umar Johnson should be censored. I don't know why they would censor him. Why would they do that to him? Why would they do that to him? I like to have differing opinions. I like to have people that want to say what they want to say. I don't even look at Umar Johnson as um, a person that is really for or against the black community. I just look at him as an entertainer. And I think that he uses his talking points to get off his thoughts, but I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it at all. I don't, I support content creators. I support free speech. Um, I have not heard Umar Johnson say anything, anything that would cause for uh, him to get banned from going live. Nope, I don't agree with it at all. I think that he should be able to get his thoughts off. And I think that just because I have a different position and a different opinion does not mean that that man should be prevented from going live. So 
I'm not sure why he got banned from going live. I will be interested in seeing what that is. Um, but I'm not a fan of that. I don't agree with it. I'm not a fan of it. And I think that content creators should be able to largely, for the most part, uh, get their thoughts off. No, I may have a difference of opinion with them, but I do support fellow content creators from being able to get their talk, they talking points off. That's not fair. I don't agree with that. But uh, I'm going to continue to read the Super Chats throughout the show. Thank you for giving me the insight, Calvin Booker. I appreciate you. Uh, on top of that, let's move over from California to New York. California to New York. Now, while California was getting it off on the minimum wage law and continuing to destroy what they had going over there with Gavin Newsom, New York was working their own magic. Shout out to Eric Adams, the other bad mayor, uh, another bad mayor inside of the United States of America. <laughs> New York was busy making sure that gig workers make $20 an hour Minimum, it's like 1956 or 1979. I don't know why they came up with them weird numbers. But New York was doing the same thing, but on the flip side. So whereas California, gig workers have to now deliver the food from the McDonald's and stuff that's paying the workers $20 an hour, and they got to get it out the mud as 1099s. New York is saying, listen, we want to pay our gig workers and not the minimum wage to, to make the food for the fast food. But now we want to make sure that the gig workers is making at least $20 an hour from the companies. We want to switch them over from being 1099s to actually being employees. <laughs> the two worst cities in the United States of America. Uh, make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Let's get to it. Special delivery. The customer wants a hot meal quickly. The delivery workers watching the clock on the job for one of the app-based food platforms. As of Monday, the hourly rate when they're actively delivering orders in the boroughs is now $19.56 an hour. That's nearly three times, the city says, what it was before. There's been a significant wage increase. $16 million is going into the pockets of app delivery workers on a weekly basis. That's huge. Some delivery workers came to City Hall Monday to be with Mayor Adams. The first of its kind minimum pay rate for app-based delivery workers was created by City Council legislation and the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. The commissioner says the companies submit reports and numbers and the city is watching the impact. It's really working out. The workers are making more money as they should to get a dignified pay rate. The restaurants are not seeing less deliveries. The consumers are not spending more money. The apps such as DoorDash, Grubhub and Uber Eats pay delivery workers. Some restaurants say customers are seeing increased costs and that's hurting business. Now the customer pay uh, two, three dollars more per order, uh, I believe. Uh, that caused us to have less customers. At it's, isn't it always funny when you see the legislator say, and that's not hurting business at all. And then they switch over to the business owner and the business owner is all afraid and their hair is all wet and they sweating and they confused about what's going on. And they losing sleep at night and they're like, listen, man, less orders is coming in, less money. We got to charge the consumers more, blah, 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 blah. The business owners is always afraid. They always like, oh my God, you can see their hair up in there. Most owners of businesses work at the business. It's not just a passive income and nothing like that. Most of them are involved with their business. Over 90 something percent of owners are participating in their own business. They work at the business that they're also employing other people at. Okay. And the business owners be like, ah, $90 an hour. And then the legislators, they had a makeup done, hair done, nail done, everything, hair done, nails done, everything. Oh, you fancy, huh? Oh, you fancy, huh? Yep. Yes, this is not affecting the businesses at all, but we're making sure that the gig workers are getting all of their monies. And you know who's going to pay for it? You. And you know who's going to suffer for it? You. And then y'all keep asking me, Anton, why is inflation so high? Well,
Pop Rice on Union Turnpike. Staff members rely on the apps to connect with customers and deliver the food. The owner is willing to pay a fee for that service, but he says orders are down since the pay went up. This is a burden to our customers. They can no longer enjoy the ease and affordability from the... And, and the rent gonna go up, because you know they rent in the spot, and they gotta maintain the equipment, and they gotta pay extra taxes, and they gotta pay insurance, and they gotta pay all of these things in order to stay in the business. But Eric Adams spoke on this, and he gave his thoughts, he gave his speech, and so we wanna see what Eric Adams says. Hopefully he's not reading. Now, we know that Eric Adams, I personally have suspected, now I can't prove this, um, but based off of the things that I'm seeing, and thank you guys for continuing to, to contribute into the show, I appreciate you. You guys keep this popping. I'm gonna read y'all super chat shortly. Um, Eric Adams, I have not, I've seen him read before. I don't know if he was just having a bad day. The couple times that I've seen him read, I don't know if, you know, the lawsuits that he's, he's fighting from 30 years ago is affecting him. But I've largely, largely suspected that Eric Adams may be a little bit autistic. I've seen these same symptoms in uh, Man Man. I did. Man Man. i seen Man Man growing up. And I said, man, have y'all ever took Man Man to the doctor to get him tested? Because every time that they tell him to read in front of the class... Don't look like he getting no better. Look like he just not a strong reader. You know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all said he's dyslex dyslexic. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let me see what the difference is between being dyslexic. Before we get into his speech, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I thought he was autistic, but y'all said he dyslexic. Dyslexia is a learning disorder that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how they relate to other words called decoding, Auto, also called a reading. I knew it. I knew it. See, I, I, I ain't crazy. I'm not crazy. I know that that's not autism. It's dyslexic. <laughs> Boy, tell me this ain't the greatest country in the world where a man that's dyslexic can become the mayor of New York City and he could be managing multi-billion dollar budgets to determine the course of action in your life, and your life, and your life. Tell me, tell me that we don't live in the greatest country on earth where a dyslexic mayor can be running in the largest city in the United States of America. I say give it up for the United States of America. <laughs> I'm not being mean. Y'all said that he said it. Anyways, let's get into what Eric Adams had to say about it. We want to hear his speech, all right? My name is Vilda Vera Mayuga, Commissioner of the New York City. I don't want to hear her. You're the older? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know that they automatically lean over I was the same way with my mother <laughs> who's the older you're the older <laughs> so this is your little brother love it love it <laughs> thank you so much commissioner uh, important uh, a day today and to uh, all those who are here that come in the spirit of a Philip Randolph he was an African American Pullman Porter who fought uh, for increases in wages. So there's a long, rich tradition <clears throat> of those who are in the field, uh, work harder, so the next generations in the profession are able uh, to ensure that they can take care of, of their families. And that's what these pioneers are, the men and women who are uh, behind us. They fought for so long, and I remember from time to time going uh, to uh, locales where they've lost uh, some of their colleagues from being struck by vehicles. Uh, and I also remember during COVID-19, uh, when we had many people who were able to social distance, people who were able to shelter in place, uh, that was a foreign term terminology to the men and women who stand behind us. They could not shelter in, fa in place. When you picked up the... Yeah, he's not that great of a reader. I don't know if he's reading right now, um, but they just, they, they just need to give him an outline. You know what I'm saying? So... 
He does trip up his words a lot, but we're going to try to ignore that part. We're not focused on whether or not he trip up his words or not. We're just going to rock out, y'all. Phone and you call for Uber Eats. It did not fall out of the sky from the food god. It came from these men and women who are behind us. They delivered to you. They made sure that you were able to provide for your family. And today we're saying we are standing up for you so you can provide for your family. This is an amazing, amazing accomplishment by this administration. And I really want to thank you, Commissioner, for your dogmatic approach to it. Uh, no matter what the uh, delivery or the apps workers were attempting to do, we were focused and our North Star was to make sure that these families got what they deserve. And having the ever presence uh, advocate uh, for working class peace people, uh, Assemblywoman Jennifer Rajkumar, it's good to see you here today as we talk about this important piece of legis legislation. Day one, our administration has been clear, and I'm going to say it over and over again, pu protect public safety, uh, revitalize our economy and make this city more livable for everyday New Yorkers. And those are the New Yorkers who are standing next to us today. Working class people who for far too long f felt the Shout vision out of the love city C. was leaving them behind. And we are delivering on this vision every day. We've recovered all the private sector jobs lost during the pandemic. And these are the types of jobs we're talking about. We know crime is down. It's going to continue to go down. And our city is getting cleaner and greener. But we know that our economic recovery, recovery has not impacted every <laughs> Let's stay focused, y'all. Everyone. And it has not benefited everyone equitably. And that is what we are focusing on during this time. We're doing everything we can to make sure New York City remains a city for working class people. Many of these big cities you are witnessing over and over again are slowly pushing out working class people. And we're going to do everything in our powers to make this a city of working class people. That is why we will continue to make sure New York City remains a city where you can live and grow and raise a family. And today, we're doing exactly that as we celebrate another victory for working people of our city. A well-deserved pay raise for app-based food delivery workers. Our delivery workers have consistently delivered for us, and today we are delivering for them. We are leading the nation with this announcement of ensuring that they can receive a suitable uh, pay that they deserve in this process. We know that wages have not kept up with the rising cost of living in the city and everywhere we can make an impact, we're going to do just that. And so when things get tough, we must invest in our most valued asset and that is our people. We depend on our app, de app delivery workers to deliver our food 24 seven. You wake up in the middle of the night and you want something to munch on, you can call delivery workers. Many of people don't realize when we legalize marijuana, people get the munchies, and so they will call any time of the day to get food delivered to them. And during the Let me play that again for y'all. I'm going to play it again for y'all, for y'all in the back. Jesus Christ. We call delivery workers. Many of the people don't realize when we legalize marijuana, people get the munchies. And so they will call any time of the day to get food delivered to them. And during the pandemic, we saw what happened. This is the mayor of the largest city in the United States of America, largely considered the capital of the United States of America, not officially, but largely considered the capital of the United States of America. This is the mayor of New York with a multi-billion dollar budget. What the heck are we witnessing right here? Oh, God, Lord, help us, Jesus. These are the people that's creating our laws. These are the people that's representing us. They, I, I know people that be watching this from overseas be like, what's wrong with America? What is wrong with America? Jesus Christ.
Let's see how much more we can get through this, y'all. What happened and what was done. Now, delivery workers who work for Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub will receive at least $19.56 per hour. That's crazy. Yes, you can clap to that. And that is $19.56 per hour before tips. Listen, we know the games that are being played uh, to take away the tips, but we're saying let's stop those games. Let's make sure these delivery workers are able to get their tips. And I'm saying to you New Yorkers that $19.56 is a starting place. If someone is delivering to your home, make sure you deliver them in a suitable amount, no matter what games the uh, app based companies are attempting to play and city council we need to look at those games and make sure we fix the process they deserve their nineteen dollars and fifty six cents and they deserve their tips and see now now you put me between a rock and a hard place honestly honestly because look i am a person that believes and i tip regularly all day every day i pay $3,600 per parking spot for, for my parking spots um, at my space, at one of my spaces at the, at the condo, which means that I'm paying $7,200 extra per year on top of whatever it is that I'm paying for my spot. And guess what? Every single time I come out, I make sure that I look out for the girl. I look out for the girl so much. She says, Anton, Anton, I'm graduating. And I say, oh yeah. She says, and I'm going to buy a car with your tip money. So I believe in me personally choosing to. Now, they make a sufficient amount of money to where we don't. But she keep me informed and she let me know who coming and going in the building and who, who signed up and who taking the tour. She let me know everything. So I believe that is worth, worth the investment. However, you're making it very difficult for me because I can't sit here and say, well, it's okay for you guys. Or, hey, why y'all not tipping? Are these people... Have to depend on it because they're only making so much per hour. They're only making $3 an hour, $2 an hour, $5 an hour, whatever the minimum wage is for, you know, workers that serve you food and stuff. If you're making $20 an hour, why I got to tip you? If you're making $20 per hour, you making $20 an hour and you telling me I got a tip? Now, see, I can't, well, no, 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 this is what y'all asked for. This is what y'all asked for. When I argue with people, when I said, hey, y'all, we got to take care of the people. We got to take care of the gig workers. We got to take care of the servers and all of this. Y'all, y'all said, this is what you said. You said, we cheat. Shout out to the immigrants. Yeah, the Africans. Africans is notorious. Nigerians, notorious for saying, mm mm, I don't tip. I pay for the service. And so this is how I'm rocking. No, this is what y'all asked for, right? Whenever I would have a conversation with people and we would do panels and they would call in and they would go back and forth, they say, Anton, you're wrong. And then I go back and I read the comments just to see what the sentiment is. Half of the people like, hey, man, we got to take care of the people. Other half of the people like, mm, your fault. You should have chose a job that paid better or the, or the job should have paid a livable wage. Right? Right? So now the fares is going up. The delivery fees is growing up. And you gonna have to not, and so now you ain't got a tip because you gotta pay them twenty dollars an hour, and they gonna pass that cost over to the consumer. So everybody wins, right? <laughs> everybody wins, right? Now, since since burgers and, and fries is gonna cost you thirty dollars plus a delivery fee, now you don't have to worry about it because this is the argument that you advocated for. So everybody run over to New York, and y'all all go do what y'all gotta do. Because we ain't got to worry about it no more. Just don't ask for nothing. Don't ask for nothing. Don't ask for one extra rent cent. Don't sit there and say, turn the little thing around to me and do like this. Hey, um, so go ahead. You can complete your transaction there. And then the first thing that pop up on the screen is 15, 20, 25% or other. So they just turn it to you and then you're supposed to just hit the thing because you pay with Apple Pay. Now we ain't got to talk about it no more. 
Don't have to worry about it. Now, everybody should be happy, right? Don't ask for nothing. Now, I may still tip. But that's my choice. But don't sit here and, and complain about it because this is the stuff that y'all advocated for. You wanted to be in a space and you said, well, only in jazz would pay people a livable wage. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. We good. We all on the same page. Everybody is rocking the same boat. We rocking. Shout out to New York City and California and California for making sure that they take care of the business. Tia Marie says, cook at home, tip yourself. Well, I get all of my groceries delivered via Instacart. <laughs> Instacart, I want my check. I want my check. Instacart, I want my check. I get all of my stuff delivered. Listen, pineapples, water. I get all of my, my blue cheeses, my Sargento, my A1 sauce, my hot sauce, my red hot sauce. All of that stuff, that's still, that's some service. I mean, I'm not about to be going through the store and going through the aisles. Um, let me get, let me get that A1 sauce. Let me make a grocery list. Man, I'm not doing that. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I'm going to pay, and I tip good. I tip absolutely good. I'm not going nowhere. The only place I'm going is to party and to work. Party, work, airport. Party, work, airport. Party, work, airport. All of that other stuff, thank God for Instacart. They bring me my, my. Uh, I got the cleaners coming to the crib. We just did the evaluation of that on Tuesday. I got the, the Instacart people delivering the groceries. I got the, the maid service. The cleaners is delivering the clothes. The, the maid service. And then the Instacart people, they bring you your detergent, they bring you your bleach, pine salt, all of that, boy, no. Give me that Instacart, boy. And it come with my, I don't even have to pay a subscription fee because it come with my Chase Sapphire card. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, yes, we gonna get it all, we gonna get it all. Um, Man, I just ordered a whole new computer off of my points. Anyways, let's continue. I don't know why they give me that Chase Sapphire card because... They got to spend way money on me than I spend on them because uh, I ain't paid no interest. Tech Coach Ralph in the building says in a few months, they're going to be complaining about being laid off. <laughs> yep, I agree. Ashton DeRoja, shout out to Ashton DeRoja, says I'm working in Texas, but I live in California. I'm, work I'm working in Texas right now, but I live in California. I'm dreading the day I have to return in July. People in California that voted for Newscom have no economic intelligence at all. <laughs> Shout out to Ashton Rojas, the Roja. Lenny Deadstock is in the Shout out to my dog, Lenny. We not rocking with Mr. Potato Head, a.k.a. Mayor Adams. I appreciate you, Lenny, for contributing into the platform, my guy. Uh, Jonathan Anderson says, AD, did you see the Breakfast Club interview with Adams? I did not. I plan on reviewing it, but I thought that I would, go re I would review it on uh, After Hours. I think that I'm going to review it, but I'm going to review it on... on this platform. Maybe we could do it tomorrow. Or maybe we'll do it Friday. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And thank you, to Jonathan Anderson. I appreciate you. I try not to watch stuff if I know that I'm going to review it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Levi DePero says, Anton, New York mayor's translation. We want you to make money so you so we can tax you so we can get that money. That sounds more like it. Zach says, do these cities not understand what 1099 means? If they are guaranteeing wages for self-employees minds, as well, do that with all businesses. I don't even know how they get paid. They got to get a W-2 if they get a minimum, a minimum wage, right? Devastator says they, re they really just let him say that. Shh. Yeah, I think that everybody was cringing in there. Voice of Reason, shout out to Voice of Reason, says, I really hate the way he talks. Sound like God have a, mis a mismatch lowering up. <laughs> Y'all so ignorant. Uh, a mismatch upper and lower jaw. Wealth Building Journey says... Cost push inflation is real. Remember, this all started with modern monetary theory and all those stimmy checks. It's only going to get worse. Dylan K.O. hit us with two. <laughs> Shout out to Precious Pitman. Thank you for coming over to the live, my friend. Precious uh, Dylan K.O. says this is a strategy. They raise the pay rate. Then the migrants will be making uh, will be in making bank. 
while living well below their means crazy. They will use this to try and turn states blue. I agree with that. Also says Elon mentioned this too. Shout out to you, Dylan K.O. I appreciate you, big dog, for contributing into the platform. Will Love, shout out to Willie Love, says gig workers can get the bag and we don't want this. Yeah, you know what? When I did sales, I was very happy not to have a minimum wage or anything like that because I felt like I could make as, money, make as much money as I, as I wanted to. I could stay out as long as I wanted to. I could make as much money as I wanted to. And so um, I didn't want a cap or a limit or a minimum. I just wanted to go out there and work and go and get it. So I don't know. You got to have a different type of thing in you in order for you to really thrive in those type of environments. But hey, whatever. Uh, migrants busted. Migrant squatters were busted with drugs, guns, and other things. You can't be. You're going to have to pick a struggle. You can't be a squatter and be a migrant, and have guns and drugs. But I guess that's what happens when you leave the borders open. Make sure you hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications, friends. Let's stay in the Bronx. A group of suspected migrants are under arrest this morning after they were discovered squatting in a home where guns and drugs were found. But that's not all. The group, the guns, the drugs were all in the same room as a seven-year-old boy. And now we're seeing for the first time new exclusive video of the moment NYPD showed up. Eyewitness News reporter Phil Tate is live in the Norwood section of the Bronx with more. Phil. Yeah, well, just last week, police arrested eight migrants believed Ooh, to be. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Phil said, I'm ready for my close up. I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, Phil, 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 Phil. I ain't mad at you, big dog. You got the mustache, you got a beard, uh, you got a full head of hair. Um,. You got your umbrella making sure it don't come close to your hookup. You got your pea coat on. Ooh. Hey, hey, Phil said I got the matching tie with the white shirt on. Talk to him. I'm about to go order me one right now. I'm about to go order me one right now. Phil said, hey, Mr. Mr. Postman, I'm ready for my... He knew what he was doing when he stepped out the house. I bet you he got him some last night. His girl said, oh, honey, you look so good. He said, yeah. He said, I'm going to put on my good coat today. I'm going to put on my good coat today. Yo, shout out to the men that, that got that T. Hanley 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. This live stream is sponsored by T. Hanley. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's right. It's a trench coat. He got that trench coat. He got that trench, boy. Got his Christmas coat on. Got his Christmas coat on. Hey, he looking sharp. That coat is sick. I'm about to go get me one. I'm definitely ordering me one today. And when you see me, I'm going to wait for like three months before I wear mine when it get cold one day. When it's a little chilly outside, and then I'm going to just show up and y'all going to forget that we even talked about Phil. That I was inspired by Phil's trench coat. Phil stepped out on them boys. All right, what was we talking about? The, the migrants? See, it's okay for guys to show up and say, yo, fam, I see you, big dog. You over there doing it, knocking them down. I see you, bro. Ha, got your Christmas coat on. No, I'm just kidding. But, dog, you look sick, bro. Go run it up. Go run. Ain't nothing wrong. Guys always acting like they don't want to compliment. No, I'm too tough to compliment. Nigga, that coat is sweet, and I'm about to go get me one and act like i never seen yours. And I'm about to go get me one and act like i never seen yours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, hey, the same way we, we throw the criticisms, the same way that we throw the criticisms is the same way that we got to get props. When we see them and they looking dusty, we call them dusty. When we see them and they looking classy, we got to give them some props. Now, it's a proper way. It's a proper way for you to get props. You don't want to go and say, hey, man, I like how that shape around you. No, you don't want to do that. That's the wrong way to get props. You got to give them props a little bit differently. Ha, ah, see you, big dog. Run it up. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, let's get back to the migrants. They squatting and they got guns and they got kids in there, all right? Let's continue. Phil, tell us. Take us away, big Phil. Be squatting inside of the basement of this home that you see right here, but it's what investigators would find inside drugs and multiple weapons, along with a seven year old who was playing inside of that same room. Now, let's get straight to some exclusive surveillance video that we just obtained when police sprung into action, hopping out of their squad cars after they got a call about a man with a gun. When they arrived, they chased 24 year old Hector de Soso Viata, believed to be from Venezuela. 
Venezuela into the basement of this Hull Avenue home. Un oh, he led him right to the guns. <laughs> he led him right to the guns. Hector Venezuela from Venezuela, and we know that ain't his real name. He got three last names. Hector ran away from the police, and the police just stayed far back enough in order to lead him into the guns. Hector, you gonna get yo. When you get back to Venezuela, when we deport you from ICE, you know you in trouble. You led them to the drugs and the guns and the kids. Hector, you a fool. What's wrong with you? Why would you lead them into the, run away from the house. Don't run into the stash house, you dummy. But I guess that's why you over here in America. You got arrested over in Venezuela and you're doing the same thing that you're doing over there. Hector ain't nobody but, what was my man name on Scarface? Not on Scarface, the Godfather. He always was the mess up. And then uh, uh, Al Pacino had to go ahead uh, and kill him. What was his name? Fredo. Fredo. Hector ain't nothing but Fredo. Shout out to Fredo. Hector out here acting like Fredo, leading him into the guns in the, in the stash house. No matter what country you go to, Venezuela, United States of America, messing up the bag. Shout out to Hector, though. We, lead, we need Hectors. They, they, they get him off the street. Another man, 22-year-old Javier Alborno, tried to get away with another gun before he was also arrested. Playing on your screen now you are got a four woman. of the eight suspects that were under arrest being walked out one by one from police. When a search warrant was in place, investigators recovered two more loaded guns, three loaded extended magazines, a box of ammunition, and a bag of ketamine mixed with cocaine. Moments ago, we spoke with a neighbor just next door about the the landlord and those uninvited guests hold on first of all you see the chick with the pink pants on thirst trapping busting it down for a real one you see her yeah second thing is they can't even speak no english how they over there getting ketamine and cocaine and guns how they getting all of this stuff man i couldn't walk Five feet in the Dominican Republic without them saying, oh, no, no. They knew I was already from, they knew I wasn't from there. They knew I wasn't from there. Couldn't walk five feet. Oh, mister. Started trying to overcharge me for food and stuff. Gave me the American menu of the food. Like, no, nah, no, nah, I want the Spanish one. And I got Google Translate. Give me the Spanish menu. It's not the same as the American, uh, the, the, the English menu that y'all keep giving me. They keep on trying to finesse me when we was over there in the Dominican. Where was we at? Santo Domingo? Thirst trapping. How they get guns? screen now are four of the eight suspects that were under arrest being walked out one by one from police. When a search warrant was in place, investigators recovered two more loaded guns, three loaded extended magazines, a box of ammunition, and a bag of ketamine mixed with cocaine. Moments ago, we spoke with a neighbor you just You know what I'm talking about, Mika. About Don't the give landlord me the English And menu. those uninvited guests. You want Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola? Give me the Spanish menu, please, ma'am. Keep on overcharging me. Every time my car go up, they switch the sign around. No, no. No, no. You're not going to get me this time, baby girl. Keep on bending over at the table. I see you. I'm good, though. I'm good, though. Give me the Spanish menu. Let me translate it on my own. Stop bringing me the American menu. Well, the squatters, you know, and uh, the land, the owner, has been trying to get them out of the apartment for the longest period of time. And I, you know, I, I know what's going on. I've been paying site. attention. Apparently, they, because they're squatters of more than thirty days, they came and they were kind of a disruptive force mainly because there were a lot of them, you know? And you didn't know who was staying there and not staying there. And, you know, the owner of the building had a hell of a time trying to get them out. 
Now, De Sosa, Villata, and seven others were charged with criminal possession of a weapon, criminal possession of a controlled substance, mm -hmm. and acting in a manner injurious to a child. All but two were released without bail. Now, Villata was already charged. What? All but two of them was released without bail. All but two. Listen, man. This is the stuff that, and I got to give Eric, Eric Adams a little bit credit. He said, listen, we got more police out on the streets, uh, the subways. We got the National Guard down there. But if we arrest them, if we arrest them, it ain't really going to make no difference. Well, why? Because they getting out without no bail. They got guns, drugs, kids, everything. And they getting out. And we don't even know who these people are. And they getting out without no bail. No bail. I can't even, bruh, if I drive without a license. No bail. The fuck is up with New York? I thought New York was tough. Y'all remember when Plaxico Barris shot, his, shot himself in the club and he had to do two years in jail? He had to do two years and he lost all of his football contracts and stuff? They getting out with no bail. And they got whole guns. I thought that New York had some of the toughest gun laws in the United States of America. Plaxico shot himself with his own gun that was registered to himself in a different, different state. And he got at least two years. And he was rich. He had a decent lawyer. And they walking out of jail. They walking out and they ain't even got no IDs. They giving them a fake name. I'm, I'm Hector from Fast and Furious. What's your, what's your middle name? Fast. What's your last name? Furious. What's your first name? Hector. And I'm running two turbos. <laughs> this country is so dumb. It's so dumb, bro. This country is so dumb. With spoon engines. And Nas. <laughs> that was one of my favorite movies. I'm running, I'm running spoon engines with Nas in them. And turbos. That's the first Fast and Furious before it got a little out of hand and I stopped watching it by the time they got to the fifth. With attempted murder for shooting another person in the leg that was over in Yonkers. As for these other suspects, they are being investigated right now, all tied to a string of robberies that investigators are seeing over in Bergen County. Look at Phil. That's the very latest in the Bronx this morning. I'm Phil Tate, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And, uh, he, he put a little sauce on that. Phil put a little sauce on I'm Phil Tate with Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Hey, man, I right, listen, you do your job a little. When you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you do your job. When you look good, you feel good. When your money right, you do your job. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Phil Tate with the jacket on, with the, with the trench coat. Running it up. Meanwhile, you got uh, migrants over here running amok. Y'all don't believe me? Here, hold on. Let me give you another one. Well, first of all, good evening to both of you. And yeah, you're talking about how this all started on Wednesday. So far, these suspects have struck three times since Wednesday. They have been robbing people at knife point. And the number of suspects in each one of these robberies has ranged from three to six. Now, before we get into the story of what's happening over in Central Park, because I know the Bronx has been catching a lot of L's lately, but what's happening over in Central Park, look at the difference between Hector and Maria over here. I don't even know who this is. Elizabeth. That got to be her name. Look at the difference between Hector and... Listen, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. She different than Hector. Hector was feeling herself. Elizabeth, she not wearing nothing except for the station's gear. <laughs> Shout out to Liz. Her friends call her Liz. If the station didn't give her the merch, she not wearing it. Diane, is that her name? It's probably a Diane. Julie, wearing all the station's gear, is not making no investment in herself. 
Margaret, Sandy, Grace, look like a Grace to me, a turtleneck, and a Fox 5 jacket. <laughs> Just got done bossing her husband around and withholding sex in her relationship. Withholding. Withholding sex in her relationship, wearing the station's gear, walking outside with no effort. No effort. I know what my snow hair is like, BizQ. I know my snow, not a snow bunny, a snow hair. And, and you better make sure that you send the tuition check. Yeah, absolutely. I know my snow hairs. Shout out to you, uh, Grace. Wonderful. <laughs> what else is new in the neighborhood? You're not surprised? Uh, not, no. I've had friends get mugged and, you know, they're like totally traumatized after. And I've been followed, like being a woman. Girl, in ain't New York nobody City followed you. Now, I understand the migrants is out there robbing people at knife point in Central Park, but you did not get followed. Not you. I've been followed. No, you want to get followed. This is one of them type of chicks that want to be, want to be, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let me, let me, let me focus. Let me focus. I've been followed. Like being a woman in New York City is terrifying. It seems some New Yorkers are just getting used to crime in the city. It's scary. I have a three year old son at home and I'm like a female jogger. And I don't know, I'm very stressed out. I had someone at Central Park South just scream at me while I was running and kind of get in my face. The NYPD says people have been robbed at knife point at three locations in Central Park. The suspects taking off with a bike, a cell phone, and other property. It started Wednesday on the Upper West Side at 65th Street and Central Park West. And on the same day, another victim was robbed at West 72nd Wonder Street. If it was Hector. Yesterday, another knife point robbery at 100th Street all the same and Central Park West. I think it's it's crazy. It's, it's dangerous. People got to be aware of their surroundings. But even then, you never know what's going to happen. I do see that there's been a rise in crime lately. So I really hope that we could find a way to decline the crime. Was that Charlie Villanueva? Is that Charlie Villanueva? Have y'all ever, y'all know who Charlie Villanueva is? Give me a second. We got all kind of celebrities. I remember him. He was playing for the Pistons and he, he, I think he's doing really good right now. That's Charlie, bro. That's Charlie Villanueva. That's not Charlie. That's not Charlie. That's Charlie. I remember because I was like, yo, I can't believe the Pistons gave him that big ass contract. I mean, that big contract. That's Charlie. That ain't Charlie Villain away, but I could spot Charlie a mile away. I heard Charlie doing good in life nowadays. Shout out to Charlie Villain away, bro. Heard he on Instagram flossing his cars. What is he doing in New York? I didn't know he was still in New York, though. That is Charlie, though. Anyways, let's continue. Migrants are stabbed, not stabbing. Robbing people at knife point. Um, robbing people at knife point and Central Park. Rise in crime lately. So I really hope that we could find a way to decline the crime. We definitely try to be where the light posts are, where people are. Now, according to the crime stats from the NYPD so far this year, that's for January, February, and March, robberies here in Central Park are up. There have been 10 so far this year. That's compared to two last year for the same three-month time period. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> y'all so much y'all come up with the dumbest jokes y'all have the dumbest i hate the chat 
I hate the chat so much. I hate the fact that I participate with the chat. I should just do this show and turn the chat off. It's no reason why I should be sitting here listening to y'all. And then I look up and I see these dumb chats. Y'all say the dumbest stuff all the time. <laughs> I can't even finish my show because now I got to be stuck with that stupid joke in my head. Who who comes up with that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, who who says that? Like, why would you? Why type something like that? What, like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, who just be like, yeah, look like they look like a... <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. I hate this chat so much. Come on. Get it together, Anton. Get it together. <laughs> I hate this so I hate this chat so much. Anyways, uh Miss Lolita Gore says, I'm getting better every shout out to Lolita. <laughs> Yeah, my hospital baby. She coming up out that hospital, though. I'm praying for you, baby girl. Shout out to Miss Lolita. Chris Moore says, El Roboto from Scarface. Shout out to uh, Scarface. Oh, God. Jay Johnson says, <laughs> What up, though, coach? 20 bucks for a burger is crazy. Buying the cow would be cheaper. The migration is wild between, uh, by the way, uh, they hit and ran my truck and kept going. Be careful out here on the West Coast for the bag chasers. Man, listen, bro. Oh, my God. It's so bad out here. Anyways, while we have migrants, we might as well go ahead and finish up with migrants since we're since we over there. Uh, squatters are selling a woman's belongings. I'm going to read the Super Chat shortly. Uh, We're going to get to it. Squatters is out here selling people belongings and taking over their houses. Uh, these migrant squatters, some of them is migrant squatters also. But make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications, man. Uh, let's end it with this. All right, picture this. You take a trip out of town only to get a phone call saying someone has moved into your home and sold your personal belongings in a yard sale and turned your house into a trap house a.k.a. a drug den. Thank you, ma'am, for educating us on what a trap house is. That is what our next guest says happened to her. Terry Boyette left Texas to go to Florida to take care of her sick mom. Then her neighbor called her and said a squatter had made themselves at home in her home. Terry says she called the police, but they told her the squatter had been there for more than 10 days now, so she would have to formally evict them. And so she did, but that eviction process took, get this, eight months. And this is what she found when she finally got her home back. This lovely pile of trash instead. Yeah, that's a brand new mattress, or it was uh, when I bought it last year. Here's where I used to have a refrigerator. Yeah, and then here's my kitchen, which is now apparently a junk room. 
Yeah, they took her refrigerator and her washer and mm. her dryer. And that's only a small slice of this domestic disaster. Terry says a lot of belongings were sold by the squatter at either a yard sale or online. Terry Boyette joins us now. Terry, thanks so much. What a nightmare. That's crazy. Um, yeah. These people who moved into your house, you had hired them to renovate and paint your home. What happened? I had hired them to do some painting and renovating and uh, trying to get the home ready. I was going to bring my mother back to stay with me. See? Ah, y'all was off. Y'all tried to predict it and y'all was off. In the chat, y'all said, oh, no, you got to get a security system, sis, and all of this stuff. Well, she hired them. She hired them to renovate the home so that she can then bring her mother back that she went to go take care of while she was gone. And then they made themselves comfortable and cozy at the crib, which set off no red flags. Think about it. It set off no red flags because they were supposed to be there taking care of the home. Then they get in there. They live for free for eight months. You can't even get into victim because we got so much red tape and the legislative process is so trash. And they sell your stuff. They, they steal and sell your stuff before they go. So they live for free and they make money from it and they sold your stuff and it ain't nothing you could do about it. This is disrespectful. This is beyond egregious. This is beyond disrespectful. This is something else. I don't even know how you, how you make sense of it. How do these laws exist to where, man, God, I don't know what the heck is going on. Eight months and they sold your stuff? Um, and I was going to be gone about three weeks. And I told them, hey, stop. Look at He's going to be over at the house. Man. Um, and apparently the one of the guys broke in and then decided to uh, rent it out to other people who were using drugs or um, breaking the law. Sold all of my items, my dining room table, TV, That's uh, entertainment center, and the smaller items they sold in yeah. the house. So, wait, your neighbor called you to give you a heads up, but was that after they'd already been there for 10 days? Well, what happened is uh, I found out a neighbor called and said, hey, um, I didn't know you had somebody staying in your house. And I said, oh, nobody's staying in my house. I'll be back soon. And she said, no, there's a guy who says he's leasing your house. So I called the police and I was like, there's somebody in my home. They shouldn't be there. And they said, well, how long have they been there? And I said, I don't know. I've been gone about uh, 14 days. I don't know when he came in. And they said, well... If it's been more than 10 days, you're going to have to evict him. That's and crazy. I said, but I don't, I, you know, he could have come yesterday. They said, well, if you don't know, it's best to go through the courts. It's a civil matter and we can't get involved. Yeah, that, that's what's making people so crazy. And that's what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis just introduced legislation to try and fix. Yeah. People don't understand this is happening across the country. It's not just happening yes. to you and it's not just happening in Texas. Um, I was shocked to find out that Dallas is number two in the nation for hot spots. And I'm trying to get a hold of my state senator, Bob Hall, to get a law passed. I did not realize this was such a crisis in our area, but yeah. it's really bad. Yeah. People are surprised to find out. Here's the thing. You have the deed. You own the house. Yeah. You can prove all that. And you did repeatedly prove all that. And yet over and over, you are told the squatters get to stay you have to go to court, hire a lawyer at your own expense on your own dime. That's crazy. Uh, to try and um, sue to get them taken out. <clears throat> well, here's the best part. When he was actually evicted, um, he wasn't there. So the sheriff went in and cleared the house. He came back, and I had to call the police and told me I had to leave. And when the sh so when the, sh the police officers came, he said, oh, that's not the homeowner. She doesn't live here. I had to produce ID, and they called and validated I own the home. That's crazy. So that he couldn't come back in. But he could just stay there, and they wouldn't do it. I was like, I have to prove I live here? It was, I, I, I this is the craziest thing I've ever been through. It's, an, it's insanity, and every day it's just something else. Yeah, I think the cherry on the cake here, Terry, is when a judge said right before Christmas, uh, yes. I'm not going to evict the squatter. I don't want him to be homeless for the holiday. And yet yes. you were homeless for the holiday, and yes. you're the person who actually owns the home. Uh, Terry he Boyette. wanted to send his appeal. Yeah. Yes. Uh, That's insane, bro. It, it, I, I don't, how do we get here? How did it get so bad to where you can go out of town and go take care of your mother, and then you, they turn your home into a trap house? 
and you can't do no recourse about it. So people can literally walk in somebody else's home in a red state of Texas. In Texas, I know Dallas is blue. It's pretty liberal. And this is, this is what y'all get. This is what y'all get for voting the way that y'all vote out here in these streets. But it's not over, only over there. Check this one out. This is even worse. Hard to believe that this trash-strewn home is an exclusive Beverly Hills. The pool looks like toxic soup. The mansion has been seized by alleged squatters, and it's perhaps the most expensive property in the squatting epidemic afflicting America. If you can, if you notice, they actually, you can hear the drone above. That's a drone in order for them to even see what's going on in the property. You can hear the drone. Check it out. Listen to it. And its pool looks like toxic soup. The mansion has been seized by alleged squatters, and it's perhaps the most expensive property in the squatting epidemic afflicting America. Fran Solomon owns the house next door. The parties continued night after night after night, and they weren't the kind of parties that ended at 12. They were the kind of parties that started at 1 a.m. in the morning, went through the morning hours till 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. The mansion is just across the street from where LeBron James's dream home is under construction, and the basketball grade is reportedly concerned over the damage to the neighborhood. The alleged squatter says he has every right to be here and he showed me a lease which he says proves it. But the agent selling this multi-million dollar estate says that lease is a fake. People have been arrested up there for drug abuse and for nuisance, for loud noise. The police have been up there at least 150 times. I got exclusive access to the mansion. It's so you hanging out in a mansion that's across the street from where LeBron James is building his dream home? And LeBron James is worried about the neighborhood. Man, why is anybody building anything in California? So if you find a home where somebody is selling over in California and it's not occupied, you can make a fake lease and then say that you live there and then they got to go through this long, drawn-out process in order to get you out. unclear how many alleged squatters are living here, but one of them is a 34-year-old actor from Italy, Morgan Gargiulo. <laughs> the place is a mess, and Gargiulo admits he and his friends turned the house into Party Central. One all-night bash drew 645 revelers and didn't end until 9 a.m. Was this turned into a nightclub, essentially? Better than that. It's a mansion. You know, I mean, it was classier than that, I would say. I had like but, a, but this was a basically a party house, no? Uh, at some point, yeah. Here's what the house looked like inside when it was listed at $4.5 million. That's crazy. And, and listen, they not even scared. They not even from here. He not even American citizen. He was like, ah, you know, we turned it into a, it was better than a nightclub. It was a, we got it popping up in here. And they, they, he went, took a shower, took the news guy through it, showed what was happening, and was, don't care nothing about that. Man, we ain't, we ain't checking for what you're talking about. We had a ball up in this joint the other day. Look at this junk. Look at him. This was basically a party house, no? Uh, at some point, yeah. Here's what the house looked like inside when it was listed at $4.5 million, lavishly furnished and picture perfect. Now sheets are hanging up instead of fancy curtains. Gargiulo promises there won't be any more parties, but anyone with a vacant Beverly Hills mansion might want to watch out. Are you planning on staying? Are you planning on moving? I'm planning on staying for a while, but, but I will be moving to a much better place. <laughs> ah, me, me, me plan on staying for a while, but we're on the hunt. I have my friends hunting for a much better place. A much, 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 much better place. Oh, man. Man. This country is falling apart, bro. No laws, no justice. No police, no rules. Everybody do what they want to do when they want to do it, and they just having a ball doing it. Let me read a few more Super Chats, man. 
Oh, we, we got this done in about two hours. We being smart today. Yeah, Trap and Slay is in the building. Says, Anton, your laugh is... I don't know what I'm doing on this. I don't even know why y'all love me. But y'all love me, so it is what it is. You know what, Trap, I had got a... Um, let me go back to that, that um, super chat real quick. Trap, I had got a message inside of my chat. Not my chat, my uh, comments on the video. Anton, I don't like you. You need to come and sit down with a real one. I'm like one of the most fun-loving people that you'll ever meet in your entire life. Anybody that's ever met me in person, how can you not love me? I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know how I got here. I don't know how we got here. How do we all, how did this happen? How did they let us come in here and have a good time on the internet and build up a community that's doing the things that's great for the people? <laughs> Nothing but God. <laughs> how they let a C student get the microphone and then start kicking it and talking stuff with the people and telling the truth out here in these streets? With me and my crazy friend in the chat, with Trap and Azriel and BJ the lawyer and True to myself and Dame and Yakar and Kojak and Brittany and Mika and Ken J and DK and Josephine and Trice and how they let me how they let me get the microphone? It's crazy and spaces. Crazy! I don't know why they let us do that. They didn't gave the microphone to a real one from Detroit, Norfolk and Chippewa on Green Lawn, in between seven and eight mile. <laughs> they done messed up. Tia, Tia Marie, they done messed up. They didn't gave the wrong one the microphone, and I ain't got nothing to lose. Cause see, listen, when you come from where we come from, it's like, wait a minute, and we could be successful. <laughs> all points on the board. This is all just extra. We ain't even we ain't even supposed to be here. It's, I almost feel like I'm y'all let me inside of the candy store. Oh man, it's about to get lit now. Um, so Ninja X says, bro, look smooth like Ryan Chazier. Shout out to So Ninja X in the building. Uh Jamal Fowler says, What up though? I got that two ball for you, big dog. Uh, King Stennis, it says, why they never squatting in a ninja house? Oh, you know why. They ain't even, listen, I seen an Amazon driver on a, a social media post running out of the hood. It wasn't nobody even chasing him. Uh, Keith Field says, when these migrants start storming those gated rich neighborhood walls, like that scene near the end of the movie Scarface, it's going to be wild. And ain't nobody going to stop them either. Uh, you are funny. Thank you, Chris Moore. I'm glad that you, I'm glad that somebody thinks so. Uh, Ken J says he moving in bronze spot next, waiting on the paperwork. <laughs> you gotta wait, gotta wait till it get finished being built. Uh, Spaces says, buddy, hit the, uh, hit him with the Tiffany Henyer. Mm. It's crazy. So, um, again, make sure y'all shout out to Teach Hanley, 30% off your first order plus 20% off of life. That link is in the description. Also, make sure you tap into the Patreon. We got Stock Club on Friday. That's going to be awesome. Um, I'm going to do Harley Initiated tonight. That's going to be lit. And then we're going to live stream on the Anton Daniels channel shortly after. Shortly after. All right, guys. Uh, any questions? Y'all not a part of the Patreon yet? Look how smooth my skin is. See how smooth my skin is? Not a spot, wrinkle, or blemish on my jump. My skin is smooth, smooth. Man, I got the smoothest skin in the world. That's because I be living right. That's because I'm living right. When you when you live right, when you living right, your skin gets smooth. You ain't got no stress, no problems, no trouble. You work hard, but you live right. You work hard, but you live right. Got that smooth skin, man. Got that smooth. They they fear me. They fear me. They fear, fear the beard, fear the beard, fear the beard. Got that smooth skin, that white. What they going to do with smooth skin and white teeth? And my breath smell good? Oh, you can't do nothing with me. You can't tell me nothing. 
You can't tell me nothing. I got the world at my feet. My skin is good and my teeth is white and they perfect. <laughs> can't tell me nothing. Can't tell me nothing. Somebody said, Razon, I'm going to read the Super Chat. Razon says, where do you find time to run through all these shows? What you mean? I'm on the clock right now. I'm on the clock right now. I seen somebody that said, uh, um, um, how can a guy that's rich be on the internet all day? What you mean? I'm getting paid from, I'm on my job right now. Y'all want to see my work computer? <laughs> I'm on the clock right now. Yeah, we got eight sources of income. On the clock right now, boy. Yeah, we yo. Oh, yeah, shout out to y'all. Shout out, to, shout out to the people that's watching this from work. I'm watch, I'm watching it from work too. I'm watching me on the TV from work right now. I'm watching me on the TV from work the same way that y'all watching me on the TV. How you think I'm looking at y'all, y'all, uh, y'all chats? I just know how to multitask, baby. I know how to multitask. Yes. So you know, I'm on the clock. You on the clock. We on the clock. We all getting paid. We having a good time. We laughing, making sure that people don't break in our house with the migrant crisis. And, uh, yeah, I'll be having that teams go off. Fleek. <laughs> yes. Why Anton ain't wearing a suit? Man, go put your security uniform on and go and defend my property, bro. Easy Money says, that's my dog. What's not to like about a real one? I'm on the clock. You on the clock. We all going to get this money. Uh, Anton is a genius, says Glow Hardy. Shout out to you. Mr. Lone Star says that London fall coat was tough. Is that what that was? That was a London fall coat? I got to get it. Shout out to Brittany B. She says, uh, how do we get here? I was looking for Dave Ramsey and found a black man in a robe, and it's been three years. <laughs> and, and you know what the best part about it was, Brittany B.? We also bust down a lot of bags together. A lot of people not familiar with that. Me and Brittany bust down. We made a lot of thousands of dollars together. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I was walking down the street. I was holding Brittany B's hands. We went over to the Cheesecake Factory, and then we went and got some money. Yes, we did go and get some money. Any woman that meet me in person and spend an extended period of time around me, you're going to get richer. You're going to get richer. Absolutely, positively get richer. Listen, I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to see y'all tonight, and we're going to run it up. All right? Let's get to it. I'm going to see y'all tonight. Make sure you send this to your family and friends. We don't want to be rich by ourselves. I love y'all. I genuinely love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Thank y'all for rocking out with me. Thank you for holding me down. I'm going to hold y'all down, too. Hopefully, add, I add just as much value into y'all as y'all adding into my life. Um, and we're going to get it. Let's run it up. Peace.